So one of my friends sent this to me. This is the dating over 50 subreddit. She says, how to get past someone pretending they wanted to date you because they thought you had money. It sounds like we have a hobosexual or a pest that wants to nest and rest just based off of that title. She says, new account just in case, but I've been following this subreddit for years and I need advice. She's 58. She says, I, 58-year-old woman, recently bought a house in a new area and began volunteering at a local food pantry with the desire to be of service, but also to get out the house and make friends. A particular guy was friendly, and it turned out he lived in my town. He suggested that we have coffee, and I said yes, but not as a date, that he was too young for me. He says, let's not label it. We met for dinner at a local place I had been wanting to go to, but not alone, and I was sure to ask for separate checks. We hung out a few more times, and I always paid my way, but there was no holding hands or kidding or any romantic behavior, yet it still felt like we were dating. Also, he liked to talk about money, what I spend on things, my approach to saving, etc. The last time we hung out, he asked me if I had a will. So the next day I called him and said that I appreciated him showing me around the area, but it felt like we were dating, which I didn't want to do, that he's too young for me. He's 48, so 10 years younger. He said this might make me angry, but it was because I have money and he has this plan to buy houses and rent them to generate income. He is an engineer and has a decent job, but he's an immigrant and it doesn't seem like he had a lot of financial backing when he came to the U.S., I told him I don't have that kind of money and I'm not interested in real estate speculation. I guess I thought that it would be, I'm sorry, I guess I thought that it would be it and it would be okay to continue working at the food pantry, but I find myself very uncomfortable around him and I've grown to dislike him a lot. Mostly I ignore him, but he is loud and gregarious. I don't want to quit the food pantry, but now I can't stand this guy. I feel like he was pretending to want to date me because he thought I had money and would help him with his plan. I feel like I was a mark. I'm looking for suggestions. How can I not care about this so I can continue volunteering at the food pantry? I don't want to be angry on a day off from work. Edit. I am very grateful for all this that took time to read my post and respond. I recognize so many of you from being part of the subreddit over the years, and I appreciate you all. I feel validated and a lot less mortified after reading your responses. Thank you for your support and also the questions because I was not discerning enough with this guy. This man really thought she was the one (laughs) and she clocked it. She clocked it really quickly, and I love that for her. I'm glad that she didn't get emotionally um, entangled and financially entangled with this man that was just attempting, who was wanting to use her. I said that um, in the beginning, the title said to me that he was a hobosexual or a pest that wants to nest and rest, but he was definitely a parasite that was going to look to attach to her and then suck her resources away from her. So I'm glad that she clocked it and um, moved on. I do some of these so that we can recognize if you ever see that type of thing, because maybe you haven't run into these types of people. So if someone starts asking you too many questions about your money, clock it. This is another reason why some of the things that women put on their social medias, these pests, these parasites, they are watching. They are counting your money. Oh, she gets her nails done every week. Oh, look at that. Look look at those decorations. Oh, look at that sofa. That would be a great sofa to burrow in. They are watching. So keep that in mind as well. Tassada says, I've done a lot of volunteer work, and every now and then, there are people I would choose not to be around or work with. Often, a talk with the person who does the scheduling is all it takes to get a shift change. Agencies desperately need volunteers and want to keep them happy. The OP says, I have developed a deep respect for the food pantry manager, and I know he needs help on the day I volunteer, but my peace of mind matters too. I'm thinking about asking to be moved to the kitchen, at least temporarily. There are a lot of volunteers, so moving one who's only there once a week shouldn't be a big deal. 
um, publishing Pete says, thank you for what you do. You seem like the sweetest person. Okay, throwaway says, oh my dear, you dodged a giant bullet. Be thankful for your intuition because he absolutely saw you as a target and a mark. I had the same a year ago. Also, the man was 10 years younger. Him, 40. Me, 50. We actually did date, though, and we kissed, and we held hands, and we had a few sleepovers, but that was all part of his con job. This guy's questions would sometimes veer bizarre, like, do you have money to pay your ex-husband alimony? And my alarm bells went off immediately. This guy wants to marry me, so in a few years, he can divorce me, file for alimony, and then try to steal my house. This is what these men are doing out here now, conning and duping women. And you are very smart to listen to that hmm voice inside your head saying that this is a con man. Keep going to the pantry. Don't let this man stop you from doing anything you like. I also live in a small town and once in a while I have to run into this F boy and he's not stopping me from going nowhere. They are using the creeps. I'm sorry. They are the using creeps, not us. And then the OP says... I need to get past the mortification I feel about allowing myself to be in this situation. For sure, it's a learning experience, one that I am surprised to find I needed. Since my divorce almost three decades ago, I have lived in apartments and a small, cheap condo. I was not viewed as someone who had money, as the divorce really set me back financially. I drive an old car, and I don't go on vacations. I worked and saved and then sold the condo and moved to a state that I can afford to buy a small house. But I can see that someone worse off than me might view me as having money because I have more than they do. I'm, I'm going to have to be a lot more careful moving forward. I'm still pinching myself to, um, to have my own house, but no one else needs to know that. Thank you for the pep talk. That's what I love about social media women having other women to talk to and like throw things off of and pick up on things that they someone else might have missed all right join the conversation don't forget to like comment and share this is another cautionary tale about staying out of the workforce for way too long this was posted in the 2x chromosome subreddit she says i'm divorcing my underfunctioning husband and i'm the bad guy she says, I recently asked my husband of over 25 years for a divorce. He is the prototypical underfunctioning husband. I have carried the mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, medical, and logistical load for our whole family, our entire marriage. Through 15 years of chronic illness, through homeschooling five kids for 20 years, through deconstructing, through one of our five kids coming out, and through him traveling a lot for work. I have tried to get him to therapy and he refused. We tried marriage counseling at my insistence for a year and it was pointless. I have had so many blunt, awful conversations telling him how hurt I am and nothing has changed. I finally had enough and in a very out of character move, I talked to him before I had all of my ducks in a row. Now I have to figure out what I'm going to do. I've been out of the workforce this entire century. God, that makes me feel ancient. I didn't finish college. I'm in my late 40s and I have been chronically ill for 15 years, although I have been improving with a new specialist. I'm thinking of going back to school, but I'm interested and passionate about law, counseling, medicine, writing, and history. I don't know if it's realistic to go back to college for a bachelor's and master's or more at this age. I still have three kids at home. It'll be just um, one in two years. I have put all of my desires and interests and goals on hold to prioritize my family for so long. I don't even know how to figure out what I'd actually love or even just enjoy pursuing as a career or area of study. This all makes me so sad that I allowed myself to be made this small, that my husband was perfectly fine with it all that even as I fought for other people's autonomy and humanity to be honored, I allowed mine to be squelched and felt like that was even more than I deserved. And yet I'll be the bad guy in my husband and some of my children's eyes. It makes me want to scream. This is one of the reasons why I, I don't want women to make being a wife and a mom their whole personality because this is what happens. You lose yourself. 
You are more than just a mother and a wife. You are a whole person that has hobbies, interests, ambitions, achievements yet to be fulfilled. But when you just pour everything into cooking, cleaning, going to, you know, different extracurriculars, your children, after a while, you just become the wife appliance, the mom appliance. You you have lost yourself. When you pour everything into everyone else, what do you have left for yourself? Um, and also, this woman says she hasn't worked in this century. That is so dangerous for women to do. Not getting, not finishing their education, not getting career experience before settling in to mommyhood and wifehood is so dangerous for women to do. Because if you have to go back for any reason, not even just a divorce, what do you do um, if you have no work experience and you're, um, you have limited education? You are going to be restricted to low-level, low-paying jobs, and that is not going to help you to support yourself and children. All right, let's look at some of these comments. Black Ninja Kitty says, my mom is 52 and graduated with her bachelor's a few years ago after taking the high school equivalency. It's never too late. And then the OP says, thank you. I love to hear that. Bertimus says, jumping in to say that my mother went back to school in her early 50s after being a stay-at-home mom for over 20 years. She has sent two of us to college at that point, and my sister was in high school. It took some effort to track down old high school transcripts and whatnot, but she had but she enrolled in a local community college that had a physician's assistant entry program connected to regional university's full PA program, basically like a master's in medicine. Five years and six months of rotations later, she was a PA. She took a job at the state hospital, making six figures and commuting 40 miles each way, and worked that state job for 10 years until she qualified for full pension and health benefits. Then she retired at 70 and divorced my dad a couple of years later. Amicable, she was just ready to spread her wings. She's 79 and still going strong, walking her dog every day, doing meals on wheels for other less active seniors, writing novels, enjoying the hell out of life. Whatever path you choose, please know it's definitely not too late to go back to school and start your second act career path. You wish you the best, OP. Then um, Kitchen Victory says, your mom is a badass. That's amazing. The OP says, your mom sounds amazing and gives me hope. Oh, dear God, I had thought about chasing down my transcripts. Are my ACT and SAT scores even valid anymore? I rode a dinosaur to take them. Um, found in Wonderland says, many places don't require the SAT or ACT scores anymore. It depends on the school, of course, but it shouldn't be too hard to find someone, some that don't require them. So I love that so many people are rallying around this woman and trying to do a pep talk for her to keep her spirits up because this is definitely going to be a trying time. Um, so I'm just putting this out here. I use this as a cautionary tale, but you see that this woman has the wherewithal to just try to do it. And I love that social media is going around and like trying to push her up and give her just a little bit more confidence that she than she has in herself. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Now we have an Am I the A-hole post from a woman. And y'all know how I feel about these. I feel like these women are just looking for validation for feeling normal human emotions. She says, my husband chose a Middle Eastern woman because he thought I would be more obedient. Am I the a-hole for calling him an a-hole? <laughs> she says, so basically, am I the a-hole for getting mad at my husband and calling him an a-hole? We met a few years back and I have felt nothing but love from, from this man. We got married in the beginning of this year and I don't know now. Something shifted. We both work nine to five. We both can cook and I guess I was expecting more equal division of chores, etc. We have lived together for four years and nothing was wrong. I'm a bit more pedantic and organized and gladly took more of the chores because I want the apartment clean all the time and wouldn't expect him to share my pedantry. When we got married, we moved into a much larger apartment. But now 
he expects me to do 100% of everything. And I told him that I wasn't happy with this multiple times, but either he promises to do more or just tells me that I was the one who changed after marriage. That is Darvo, y'all. Deny, attack, reverse offender, um, reverse victim offender. That is Darvo. He is now denying it. Okay. <clears throat> Today, he was very irritated that I brought up this topic again and told me to stop nagging him and just do my job and obey him. <laughs> and um, would you have done the same if you were married? I'm sorry, if you have married a Middle Eastern man, he is white. I was confused, but apparently if I had married a Middle Eastern guy, I would just have done all these things without complaining, but I'm only doing it now because he is not. First, he is wrong. I am not traditional. And even if I was married to a Middle Eastern guy, um, I would have chosen someone who had my beliefs. And there are plenty of Middle Eastern modern men out there, especially living in Europe and second generation like me. Almost all the people I know are like me because we basically chose people who are like us. And second, he is not Middle Eastern. I got very upset and asked him if this is the reason he married me because he sure changed after marriage. He called me ridiculous. I call him an a-hole. He said it was unfair that I called him that. So he is now the victim. This is what I said is Darvo. Deny, attack, reverse, reverse victim, offender. So he is the one that is, you know, feeling aggrieved. Like, how dare you say that about me? These men really believe these stereotypes about these certain women being traditional and thinking that they're going to get a bang made, thinking that they are really going to get a wife servant, a wife appliance, and they are getting pushed out of Delulu land when women are like, no, I really do wonder what this woman is going to do with this because obviously they're going to come to a point where it's like, Okay, you expect me to be your servant, and he is just expecting a servant. So I don't know how you fix this because he he's just like now I'm married. <sighs> I don't have to do anything of this anymore. So I don't know how this is going to work out. A depth ad says he thinks you're being unfair by calling him an a hole for re revealing his true colors, which is clearly racist and sexist. Tell me you're in a, an abusive relationship without telling me you're in an abusive relationship. As far as calling him an a-hole, if the shoe fits, wear it. He most certainly, I'm sorry, he is most certainly an a-hole. Um, the OP says, thank you. I was starting to doubt myself the way he was being upset about me calling him out because he now feels aggrieved that you have the nerve to call him out. I would have asked if he would behave like that with a white woman and to stop trying to appropriate your culture as it is offensive. You didn't marry a Middle Eastern man, you married him. And if he keeps this behavior, you will call his manager to complain, aka his mother. I honestly feel he believes he trapped you and he is showing his true colors and the flag color is full red. You entered this marriage with different expectations you were groomed into believing he was someone he is not. Be careful with your next steps. I have no idea why these men these days simply still believe that they are trapping women with marriage as if women won't divorce their butts. Short Pitch says he isn't upset because you called him an a-hole. He is upset because you showed his true colors and he is exposed. Nurse Penguin says he is upset because his master plan for having a double income and a bang maid didn't work out as planned. Revolutionary Cow says, I know someone who married an Asian woman for the exact same reason, but she was traditional, but to be together and fake it for a few years is a whole new level of assholery. You and he need to sit down and discuss what each, um, what you each see for your future being, and then you can make a decision on what you're going to do. The person at the bottom says, bang made. I'm filing this this one. Bang made is coming into our lexicon. Y'all need to file it away and use it. That is what they are expecting. Someone that they get to screw and who works in the household. They're even expecting their bang made to bring in all of the money. Okay, Snow says, you married him because you thought he valued you as an equal in the relationship based on living together for three or four years before marrying. 
If you were traditional, likely he would not have had a date with you unchaperoned before you were married. His true colors have shown through. He is an a-hole and you are definitely not an a-hole. Um, Perplexio says, as one of my therapists once says, shame is one of the most difficult emotions to deal with and face head on. There is often transference or gaslighting just to avoid facing shame. That is what he is doing now. So yes, he is trying to put it off on her. That is what transference is. All right, y'all, I'm going to leave it there. What do you think about this? Don't forget to like, comment, and share.